Leonardo AI's Canvas 2.0 has been a major step up for the Canvas tool in general. So the way it works is if I go into my personal feed, I can actually find an existing image of mine like this, click on the three dots and I can go straight into edit in Canvas. But you don't need to do that if you want to just import, you can go down the left here to AI Canvas and simply enter it that way. Now, if I want to work with an image, starting with those basics, what I can do here is go to upload image and it can be from the community. So I can choose an image from the community or one of my generations or from my computer. I'm gonna choose one of my images you know, of this uh, natural meadow with the Northern Lights. And you can see this little window here. That's a little window that I can generate within. And I can unlock that or lock it and I can move it around. So I can take this select and just kind of move this image around or try and move the actual window itself. So I have a few options there. But let's say we're gonna look at some of the uses for this and explore some of the tools. I can go over here to upload an image from my computer, choose this image of the car here in the flood water, and it's pretty big. So I'm gonna use my mouse, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna take this image and just kind of move it around until I can size it down. I'll zoom back in, I'll kind of move this out of the way, lock that port. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna move it off of the canvas because I want to erase some of what's around the outside. And if I do it over this image, it will erase both of the images. So I take my eraser tool and I can make it pretty big to start with and just kind of clean up some of the stuff around the car. And then I shrink it down, zoom in a bit more to fine tune. And so one of the things I can actually do is if I move this over and pop it right here in the water, it doesn't necessarily look very natural at the moment. And to be honest, it probably still won't look too natural, but I can, again, I can just erase the background and get the AI to fill it in, or I can mask the background. And instead of removing it, it will actually just, you know, it's got a bit of a display error here. I'm not sure what's going on, but if I draw around that car, a mask here, it will use that area to generate my image. And I'm just gonna say water around car and hit generate. And I've got a few options here. And that one probably looks the best. It's done a good job of blending the brown in there, which is kind of what I wanted to test. Uh, it has cut off a little bit too much of the car, but that's because the masking was not was pretty loose. It wasn't super tight. But overall, I think that looks pretty good. But you, So you can basically use that to blend images in. However, if I don't like that, I can actually still click this image. I can move that around. You'll see that there's a full image in here. So if I hit I've just control Z to undo, you undo and redo over here, I can still click, I can unlock and move that around. I can hit accept or cancel, but now I'm just gonna hit cancel. I've still got our car there and I'm gonna just remove that car as well or remove some of the mask, just clicking on these areas, hitting delete, start again. Now I zoom out a bit and I make this a bit bigger. And if I select this little bit of land here, grab my eraser and just kind of remove a chunk of that. I've got a dream shape of seven turned on here. I've got my input in paint strength up all the way to one. I'm going to type in mythical temple and hit generate. And it'll actually pop a temple in there. And I've got a few options, so maybe something like that. You can see it kind of generates that temple in place, which is a pretty cool feature as well. But one thing that's really cool about the canvas 2.0 is I'm going to get rid of absolutely everything. I'm going to cancel that. There's canvas mode. So at the moment we have in paint and out paint, but I can also just text to image to create an image. I can also sort of do image to image or sketch to image. There's a few different things I can do. So starting off with text to image, I'm going to bump this up to 1024 by 768. Once again, I've got dream shaper on, so I'm going to leave that on for now. But because I'm doing text to image, I can also turn on alchemy and prompt magic. So I'm gonna say here, powerful wizard, purple glow, which is similar to what I did in my alchemy video. I hit generate, zoom in a bit. You see, I've got some options. We might stick with this one for now and just click accept. So I've been able to just generate an image. And you'll notice I had three options because I had three chosen here. My image dimensions I chose here and I can do a little bit more with the seed, which is uh, kind of like the starting point if you wanna get more consistent results when you retry things but that's sort of getting a bit more down the advanced path, but it's a pretty powerful tool. So I can actually just generate images straight in here as I would with the image generator. And then of course I can switch from text to image here to in paint, out paint yet again. This time I'm gonna take my window down to 512 by 512. 
I'm going to take my image and enlarge it a bit and just pop in here. Once again, grab my eraser. And this time I can say, I'll leave the purple glow in there, crystal ball, purple glow, so I can actually generate an image and then adjust it. You see, she's got a crystal ball here. I've got three options. She's got massive thumbs in this one, so we'll stick with that one. However, it's a little bit rough, but you sort of get the idea. We can now accept that. And now we've generated a crystal ball and we can continue to make adjustments to this image. So now we're able to give her sunglasses and you get the idea from there. Another thing is going back into this section here, we've got image to image, which I'll actually come to last and then sketch to image. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna actually grab all this stuff and just kind of move it over here. And I'm gonna import an image. So this is some AI art I've actually generated in another program like Mid Journey or something like that. And this is a one thing that uh, I really wanted to stress. You don't have to stick to one platform. You can use Leonardo AI in conjunction with other platforms if you like their tools and certain things that they do differently. So I'm gonna zoom in and now we're at sketch to image. So if I take this sketch here, I bring this down a bit and I'm gonna change the color here to maybe like a green, although a little bit of a, a duller green. I can kind of draw a big green blob here. I'm gonna then lighten up the green, bring the, and I'm gonna basically try and draw a frog. So I've got here what is a really, really crappy frog. But because I have sketched image on, I'm gonna see what results we have. This is the first time I've actually tried this feature, so it will be interesting. I go to automatic masking, I'll leave it at that. Override defaults, eh, we'll leave it at whatever. But overall, we've still got Dream Shaper selected. So let's give it a go and hit generate. Now I've made the mistake of drawing a frog and writing in sunglasses. So I'll go back, top in frog, generate. And you see it's actually popped a frog in where I've drawn it. This has kind of matched the pose a bit more, although the frog's a little messed up. But uh, the other thing too is because we have these different models available, I don't have to stick with these results. I can go over here to Dream Shaper 7 and zoom out a little bit. I can select a custom model, find something like cute animal characters. I'll click on that, generate with this model. And this time we will try again. Now we get more cartoony frogs. This frog face looks pretty cool. But you can see it's actually paid attention to where I drew and it's tried to create the frog over the top of that. I'm gonna accept that, but there's also other uses for it, which you would have seen in the little thumbnail before. Once again, if I import an image, I'm gonna go upload image from my computer. I've got this man's face here, which I'm going to resize a little, although I need to get to the corner here. I pop him here and I select all this other stuff over here and move it out of the way again. I'm gonna move my viewport over his face. Maybe I make him a bit bigger and zoom in. So I can play with his facial features just a little bit. I can sketch again, I can choose black. I can draw a mustache and a bit of a goatee that looks pretty ordinary. And I'm gonna type in here facial hair but I need to change this from cute animal characters to something else. I'm gonna go Stable Diffusion XL 0.9, generate with this model, and hit generate. You can see it's added some nice, ridiculous looking facial hair. I think this one's probably the best, we'll stick with that. But also, one thing that is a little bit annoying is the fact that it looks pretty grumpy. So we can still get that sketch. First of all, I accept, and I'm going to draw a mouth here and I'm going to then switch to white and just sort of draw some white in there and I'll type in here smile now we can choose to have the dentist's nightmare or maybe this one here looks a bit good he looks a bit funny now but uh, overall still pretty cool and then of course I can do more with that I can draw now we have some green glasses once again probably these ones are the best I hit accept so now I have this image that I've been able to draw over and get the exact result. Not the exact result, but get a result that I want. Now, if you spend a bit more time with it, you can probably get better results than what I did, but it's still a very powerful feature to play with and can be a lot of fun. But let's just zoom out, take our original guy out of here. We'll leave that one there for reference. Zoom in over here and move the viewport. And what we're gonna do, instead of sketch to image, 
we're going to go image to image. And there's a few different things we can do. For one, I can just go exactly the way we are here. I can type in man's face, hit generate. And you see it's referenced that original image as layout for the new image that it has generated. And to be honest, we're actually not too bad. It looks <laughs> a bit of a funny stare, but you get the idea. But that's not just where it stops. I'm going to hit cancel, scroll down. We have here control net. So I've just cleared my canvas completely. And in order to use control net, I need to use a model which works with Stable Fusion 1.5. So Dream Shaper version 7 does that. You can also find that out by going to your homepage under fine tune models. You can actually open up a model. It'll show you the base model. So it needs to be version 1.5 that it works with. So I have that on. I make sure alchemy is turned off because alchemy will disable the, the option. Otherwise I have control net here. I have pose to image, which will actually replicate a pose into another image or edge to image. It'll detect the edges of an image and recreate within those edges. So it's kind of good for if you want to change the color of an ob object. We've got depth to image. So if you're something that has a lot of depth of field, you can work with that. We will start with edge to image. And I'm going to put the control net weight all up to one and I'm going to add an image from my computer. So I have this dog image here. I'm going to resize it into the window. If I type green dog down the bottom here and hit generate, it produces a picture of a green dog with a few options. Now I like this one the best. I'm going to accept. Now if I move the original, move this over next to the original image, if you look at all the hairs around here and all of these little bits and pieces, it's really detected where every line and sort of shape is by checking the edge and it's filled that in with different colors and given it pretty much the identical layout but again just different colors within those edges it is essentially the same photo recolored but this time if i click on that but i bring the control net weight down to half so it uses half of that information i can generate it's now a little bit looser you can see how it's still kind of got that same layout in the same position but the hair and that is a little bit more unique in the way it flows and it's given a little bit more artistic freedom so the exact same thing is a pretty cool uh is a pretty cool option if you want to try and just change the nature of an image but if you want something to sort of be a little bit more artistic of an original image this is a very cool option if i remove all that this time we add a picture of a face i'm going to pump the control net weight up to what one and i'll show you exactly what i mean with this face by typing in something like purple face green eyes generate Place two side by side and you can see it is this exact chin shape and layer and it's altered the colors. It's even changed his hair a little bit. I guess that might've been a little bit more difficult to interpret, but you can see how it's really modeled his face pretty much exactly. And again, I move this over here. If I want to create something a little bit different, bring the control net weight down. But this time I say 3D anime style. And because I've given it a bit of freedom of movement, but still referencing the edges of the face. I hit generate and it's gone for a literal anime style by preferencing a woman's face. So we've gone a little bit too far back. So let's crank it back up to about 70%, hit generate. And we get our man back again with a little bit more artistic sort of freedom added into that prompt and a bit more cartoony. So that's a pretty handy tool for taking an image of someone or taking an image of anything and kind of playing with it using AI to manipulate and get something different. Again, I'm gonna cancel delete all this stuff. And we're gonna switch from edge to image to depth to image. Now for depth of field, I need to find image. Now one thing you can do with canvas editor is simply drag and drop images in there. And that's pretty handy. So I'm gonna zoom out and just resize this image again. Now you'll notice that there's some blurring at the front and blurring at the back with a focus in the middle. This is the depth of field in a photo. And we can use that to sort of help control our image. So I've got here depth to image, what I can do is type in a crowd of aliens with green skin or something like that, something completely different. I hit generate. Now this image looks completely different, but you notice they're a little bit blurred at the front, a bit blurred at the back, and there's a little bit more information here in the center. If I scroll through, however, this isn't really uh, the best image. I'm gonna go to where it says Dream Shaper and choose a different model. Let's go with Spirit Creature. Stable Diffusion 1.5, Humanoid, Cats, and then comma, Crowd. I'm gonna bump up the resolution to try and get a little bit more detail. It, there's a lot of detail we're asking for here, so we're not getting the best results, but you can see how that depth of field has actually been uh, used. We've got humans in this one, cats in this one with that depth of field. We can also just see, even type in something like Blades of Grass. I'm gonna change that back, Dream Shaper. 
And you can see it's kind of created a bit of a blades of grass environment. Again, blurred at the front, focused in the middle, blurred to the rear. So depth of field is actually a really handy tool if you want to sort of mimic a particular layout with that focus effect. But moving on, we're gonna try now by switching to pose to image. So we've got an image here of a guy, looks like he's a fighter of some sort. And let's say I want to take that pose and put it onto a different character. Now again, I'm gonna type in here, anime martial arts warrior. We have got dream shaper and pose to image. And I'm gonna crank that up to full because I wanna see what we get and hit generate. You can see it's actually pretty much copied that pose. If I zoom out a little bit, try to move this guy over, even though it's not perfect, it has done a very good job. The elbow, this elbow was lower than that elbow, even the way his face is kind of turned slightly off to one side. He's got a sword in this one. So you can see just how it's changed that. I could even change that to something else. Let's move this guy back. Try again. <laughs> got a Kung Fu alien. Hasn't quite turned out that way we wanted to, but you can see it's all kind of there. This time I can say humanoid cat boxing. This time I'll go back up to Dream Shaper. Choose spirit creatures. I'm not expecting to get a great result, but I do want to test it out. Let's hit generate. And we've got a human wearing a cat hoodie. Another strange picture, another one. But you can see the power of this, especially when you can play with it and get some really good results. I'm using very simple prompts here. You could probably get something much better if you spend a bit more time working on your prompts. But that is essentially a lot of the cool sort of techniques that you can use the Canvas Editor for. Now, if you're looking for more information on the Leonardo Canvas Editor, there's a lot of pre-existing features. I'll pop a video on the screen right now that you can check out to explore that further. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.